In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In one of the hymns of the church, we chant, let us enjoy the hospitality of the Master. And when we pray, and when we are in church, and when we celebrate the divine mysteries and the holy rites of the Church of God, we enjoy the hospitality of the Master. And we always give thanks to the host for giving us richly of his good things. And this is not just any other host. This is the King of all, the Lord of of all the angels, the King of glory, our Creator, our Master, Jesus Christ. We are enjoying the benefits and the grace of the Holy Feast of Theophany still. Last week we talked about how the Trinity was made manifest and how the three steps are made manifest also that of repentance, of illumination, and of theosis. And we heard in today's gospel concerning a light which shone in darkness, Jesus Christ. And he began to preach, saying, repent. And the message is heard every year, every day, at all times. Man is called to return to his creator. And the feast is an awesome one because the grace of the holy waters is great. Yesterday we heard a short sermon from our patron, St. John Maximovich in Trapeza. He says the natures of the water, the nature of the water is changed on this day. I'm reminded, and I'm still amazed every time I look at my Ngolpion, my Panagia, since I told you that I put it in the holy water three times and it came out brand new, it's shining still, with great detail. And we partake of this water during this week, the holy water before we take on Didron, because we're honoring the feast. And this great blessing which our Savior has given us. The saints of God had learned so much by their repentance. They learned not only about themselves, but they learned about God, and they came to know themselves, and they came to know God, which sparked zeal in them. When one starts to come to understanding and knowledge, That means that he's going to do everything possible to attain his salvation and to turn away from the torments of hell. He's wise enough to understand that he he cannot take his chances. And so this is why our Lord gives us this saving medicine of repentance. Today we have great examples of saints St. Theodosius, the Kenobiarch, who was one of the great fathers, Cenobitic fathers in Palestine. And St. Vitalius, St. Vitali, who was from the monastery of Abbas Seridas in Gaza, and who then moved to Alexandria and was under St. John the Almsgiver, the Patriarch of Alexandria. It's a remarkable life, and when we read lives of saints, we are amazed that our faith is verified because the struggles which they undertake to attain salvation are not human, they're not worldly, they're not carnal. They are above this fallen nature. And I'll explain by giving you an example from the life of St. Vitali. When St. Vitali went to Alexandria, he had a blessed work, which in the eyes of men appeared to be extremely scandalous, beyond scandalous. 
Being a monk, he would go every night to the brothels. And so people got scandalized by his behavior. And it was reported to St. John, the Patriarch of Alexandria, who didn't really do much about it because he had a previous experience. Someone <clears throat> had reported to the saint, St. John, the Patriarch of Alexandria, that there was a young monk walking the streets of Alexandria with a young woman. And so St. John had the young monk arrested and corrected for one night. And in the middle of the night, St. John had a vision where he saw this monk with marks on his back from whips. And the monk looked at St. John and said, Father Patriarch, this time you made a big mistake. So St. John was shaken by this vision and he called for the monk. He asked the monk to take off his garment so that he could see his back, so that he could see whether or not he had these marks from the whips. And the monk, being obedient, did so, and, but all of his garments fell, and it became evident that the monk was a eunuch, and then it became evident that there was nothing going on between him and the young woman, <coughs> who was actually on her way to salvation. She had lived a sinful life, but she found this young monk, and he was bringing her to a convent. So the story got all mixed up, and St. John said, from this point on, I'm not going to come to any conclusions until I hear the other side of the story. I'm not going to hear it. I'm not going to come to any conclusions until I hear the other side of the story. Very significant, except especially for those of us <coughs> who have a certain place in the church, like bishops, priests. Sometimes they can be very irresponsible and passionately come up, come with come up to conclusions, and, and then it can be very disastrous. It could have disastrous consequences, and sometimes they're not very wise, and they don't learn from their mistakes, and they continue in this passion, and they cause damage to the faithful, and then they're going to have to answer to God for that, from which may the Lord deliver us. So St. John, the almsgiver, was wise. He was careful. He was a responsible person. He thought responsibly. So in this particular case, because he had gone through that experience, he thought, I better be careful about this Vitaly. He had some insight already. And what Father Vitaly was doing was actually, he would pay for one night with a woman, and then he would do prostrations and prayers all night with the woman, and he made the woman promise that she would not sin this night, because as you know, from the apostles, whosoever connects with the harlot is connected, becomes one body. And the sad thing is he's connected with the, all the other people that that person was connected to. And there could be a lot of demons there, a lot of bad parasites. But in this particular case, the harlot would connect in a spiritual way with Father Vitali, who connected the harlot with God. And he made them promise that they would say nothing about his blessed work. And one time, one of them slipped a little bit and she became demonized. And because of that, all the other harlots were afraid to say anything about his blessed work. And at the time of his blessed repose, after all those people judged him, and the people found out, they found an inscription written by the saint, Men of Alexandria, judge not before the time. So even in extreme cases like this, one should be cautious, one should be careful. 
The fathers of the church do not teach us to judge. They teach us to not judge. They teach us to be careful. They teach us to be responsible. They teach us to be cautious. They teach us to look at ourselves. They teach us that if we don't look at ourselves and we look at others, we're not going to get anywhere in the spiritual life. And they teach us that by doing that and by behaving in such a way, we are backwards in the spiritual life. Which means that most of us are backwards in the spiritual life. So what do we do about it? Do we just say, oh, well, that's just me? I remind you, you can't say that if you're a Christian. The Christian cannot say that's just the way I am. Remember the words of St. Hermit of Alaska, from this day, from this moment, from this hour. Let us strive to love God above all things. And that's a special task, and that's a blessed task, and if we do so, our life will change. So let us behold now these blessed examples of holy men who teach us what we should be like and what we shouldn't be like, and let's be careful when we open our mouths and say things. Let us finally learn some of these basics, those things which our Lord says to us, those things which our Lord commands, to, commands us in the scriptures. People forget his commandments, or they choose whichever commandments they want. But you know, one of the commandments is love your enemies. And so these are the things that we need to learn while we have time here on earth. Bishop Nikolai Velimirovich in his beautiful poem says, Bless, O Lord, my enemies, for they are my friends. They have helped, they have helped me. Perhaps they don't realize it, but they have helped me to humble myself more to understand what man is like, what is in man. The delusions and the parasites that go through the mind and the heart. And then I tell myself, I don't want to be like that. I need to conform to the image and likeness of my Creator. If we do these things, they will become more real for us and he who commands them will become more real to us. And he will dwell in us and move in us and enlighten us. May the Lord grant unto us his blessings. May he grant unto us the ability to accept his hospitality, his gifts, with thanksgiving. Not in a darkened state, for how sad it would be for us if we have all these holy things in front of us and we are not conscious of them and we are not conscientious people. Let us send them glory to our Creator who has richly bestowed upon us His gifts and let us ask Him that these gifts will be unto us for enlightenment, for purification, for salvation, not unto condemnation, but unto life everlasting. Amen.